Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is going to be all about my favorite skincare brands and my favorite products from my favorite brands. I actually don't know if I've ever done this kind of video before. I did do my favorite K-beauty brands last year, but we're throwing them all together today. Oh, it it's mostly K-beauty skincare brands. <laughs> Just a fun video to get us into the weekend and then I am hiring a lighting specialist to come and fix the lighting here so that uh, things look a little bit more accurate. <laughs> Let me tell you what, there are a lot of things behind the scenes that I just never would have known are a thing on YouTube until I started doing it. Timestamps and links are in the description box below. As always, I want to say a few disclaimers here. So one is, I'm really trying hard to make sure that today's video is not a current favorites. This is something that is so tempting to do. You always have current favorites, but are they your universal favorites? Are they going to stand the test of time? I just don't know yet. This is in my last week's haul, if you want to know what I was just holding up. The other thing is I do want to make sure that these are all brands where I've really done a full trial with them. I know what the brand is about and I know that I really feel this is truly one of my favorite brands. So that means excluding brands where we haven't yet done a trial. Painful, painful. Look at how much of this product I've used. Painful. We're gonna trial this brand either next month or in March. And then we're taking subscriber suggestions for brand reviews. Actually, you can go ahead and leave those now because I should be buying for April and May about now. And I need you to know one more thing. I cannot separate price from how I feel about a brand. There will be one expensive, maybe two expensive brands in today's video, but I'll, I'll explain why they're here because overall I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a rich person. <laughs> I am not somebody for whom money is no object. And so I am going to always factor in price. This is going to make it a little strange that there are no Western drugstore brands in this video. So let me make sure to say that the reason for that is because a lot of you have told me that things may be expensive for me over here in the United States, but apparently that's not always true for people in other countries. Some of the examples that I've been given specifically are Elf, Maybelline, you know, these are very affordable brands here, but apparently in other countries, in, in Europe, in Australia, these are not inexpensive brands. And I think that's a lot of, I, th I think that's a lot of why K-Beauty is so globally popular. I, I do think that the prices remain fairly consistent from one country to the next. If you know more about this, feel free to share in the comments. But yeah, you know, price, it's, it's a factor for me. You all know I keep a budget, right? I have kept a budget for about 14 years. It's been 14 years. It's not a big deal. It's just I note every purchase that I ever make. <laughs> I'm laughing right now because occasionally, you know, I'll, I'll tip somebody and then my phone comes out so I can note it and Aro, Aro will go, you, you gotta write down the two dollars, you gotta write down two dollars, it's gotta go into the budget. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into today's video, starting at the bottom of my top eight. Oh, I did a MySpace. <laughs> Well, I am a millennial. Number eight on my list is Beauty of Joseon. I know, I know what this used to be, my absolute favorite brand, and they're still among my top eight. That's a coveted spot, as all millennials know. <laughs> but I think what I realized over time is that I really love the Beauty of Joseon brand. I love what they stand for, I love what they do. As an example that I've talked about many, many times, they have a retinaldehyde serum where the product is one fluid ounce. It is safe. It is made for the eye area, but you can use it anywhere. And that product is one you can find on YesStyle and Stylevana for $10. Ten, ten dollars. For comparison, I just got in PR this uh, retinol eye cream from Murad. It is 0.5 fluid ounces. It is nice, don't get me wrong, but it is $92. <laughs> Reasons like that are why I love Beauty of Joseon. Do you want to dip your toes into the world of ginseng? Beauty of Joseon. Fragrance-free, straightforward serums, Beauty of Joseon. But the truth is, I realized over time, I don't really 
use a lot of these products. I admire them, but I don't use them in my own routine. And that's the reason why Beauty of Joseon moved down in my favorites. It's just a personal preference thing. And yet, my favorite product from Beauty of Joseon is controversial. <laughs> It's controversial. It is the Ginseng Moist Sun Serum SPF 50 Plus PA4 Plus. I know this release was met with so much criticism because, again, a lot of what people, including myself, were enjoying about this brand is that it was a very low irritant option. They avoided fragrance and essential oils, and then they came out with the sunscreen with essential oils. Why would we? It's very confusing. It is very confusing, and yet, it took me a while to try it. Do you all remember? It took me months. I was nervous about it. I got it in and I love it so much. And as I've said in quite a few videos now, the reason I love this so much is because it's, it's almost like the perfect primer. It's that new formula, so there is truly no white cast, but it has that kind of silicone-like feel. It, it, it feels like a primer. So imagine if you took your favorite primer and suddenly it was a product where you can really apply two full finger lengths of this to your face, get that SPF 50 plus, PA4 plus coverage, and you get the most beautiful primer effect as well. And while I am somebody with a bit more sensitivities, this is going great for me. Beauty of Joseon has said that they are coming out with a, a fully essential oil free version, but I, I, I wonder if it will smell actually bad. You know, they claim that the reason they added those essential oils is because it did smell bad without them. It really just smells like nothing. It's, it's, it's bizarre, actually. It smells like nothing. Just this week, we talked about products that do have fragrance, and yet to my nose, they do not smell good at all. <laughs> fragrance is a very nuanced thing. It's a very nuanced topic. Anyway, all I will tell you is, yes, this is my favorite product from Beauty of Joseon. My number seven favorite skincare brand is Suisu. Like I said, we will allow some of the more expensive brands into this video, but I will give you a full explanation of why. I love ginseng, not just seeing ginseng extract in a product. I've noticed that the quality of ginseng really matters. It matters to include ginsenicides. We've talked a lot about this in the past. I'll link you a video if you want more info. This is why I gravitate towards Suisu over Beauty of Joseon's ginseng products, for example. But this is a very expensive brand. I cannot afford to be a Suisu stan. If I was a rich person, maybe. May per probably. <laughs> but I'm not, so what I try to do is just pick one ginseng product at a time, and that's the product that I will use in my routine. Can't do the whole thing as all Suisu SK2 Dunginbi would if I could, but I just choose one, and I do have to say, Suisu, Suisu is is the best luxury brand, in my opinion, the best luxury skincare brand. They put so much work into every product. You know, they are known for their research into ginseng and using their products, it shows. I'm holding up the First Care Activating Serum. This was recently reformulated, and I think it's a funny story. I know a lot of people haven't yet tried the reformulation. This is one of two gifted products in this whole video. I don't know if I would have tried it if I wasn't sent it either because I too, you know, I get nervous about reformulations. We all do. But I have to say, I, I feel like I do like the reformulation more than the last version. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if my uh, last version was maybe older. I don't know. But I feel like this delivers on the claims. They claim that this helps with the absorption of anything you apply on top in addition to all of the other benefits of ginseng. It is an interesting product because you use it first before anything else in your routine, but I feel like when I do that, everything works better. And it's actually not too expensive. This is Suisu, so it's still expensive, but it's not too bad. They, they certainly have some, you know, $400 products that I, I'm never gonna try. So ultimately, I'm bumping this up to my favorite. It was the overnight mask. I actually still very much like that. It's, it's almost affordable in terms of price per ounce, but I feel like this does so much for my skin. 
Number six on my list is Mary and May. I realized that I had to include Mary and May in this video because I was thinking about brands that are always somewhere in my routine. As you know, Mary and May is always somewhere in my routine, often in a surprising way. At the moment, this is, this is their cleansing pads. Gotta love this. Gotta love that somebody who sat over here and said, I don't understand toner pads, is now sitting here saying, you know what I've been using? Cleansing pads. I genuinely didn't even think that I would like these. You have to, you have to rinse after these. I, I thought I wouldn't like them. Look, this brand is always somewhere in my routine. <laughs> And I love so much that this brand discloses everything. It's a big deal for me. I care about that. That's a lot of why I like Beauty of Joseon as well. 1% PHA in this product, 10% birch juice. I care about those details. You may or may not, but I do. But I'm gonna go with the Blackberry Complex Cream Essence for my favorite product from the brand. This is a category that I always love so much more in the winter months, but it is true that I always love it more in the winter months. Every winter, I am over here using these more moisturizing essence products. And theirs is a great option. I feel that it is a little more stable than the one from Dr. Surical. That's a good one too, though. If your house isn't 80 degrees, you may have no problems with the Dr. Surical product, just saying. But it's so fun to use. You know, you shake it up and then you get this creamy essence. I absolutely love using this product. I love, again, all of the disclosure. I even love, even though it doesn't apply to me, I do love that Marion May is a quote unquote clean brand. That'll never be a selling point for me personally. I am not a strictly clean beauty person. You all know this. But I like that they are because I think it proves something. It proves that clean beauty doesn't have to just be Tata Harper price points. How many of you remember when clean beauty started hitting the market and it was absurdly expensive? It was so expensive and it just didn't make sense. I felt like, okay, so you removed parabens. Why does that make your moisturizer $100? My number five favorite brand is Misha's Chogong Jean. Let me give you a little bit of insight into how this brand became one of my absolute favorites. So, if you get a lot of your skincare information from social media, there is something that I, I think we should all keep in mind. I do feel that there are more creators in their 20s, or maybe it's just that there are more successful creators in their 20s. As a consequence of that, a lot of the products that are talked about on social media are really designed for a younger age range. In fact, if you are a younger person, you may not at all like this kind of texture. It's, it's much more occlusive. It is going to give your skin a lot of moisture, a lot of hydration. These are characteristics that mature skin types will probably appreciate more. And so what I'm saying here is if you do have more mature skin, you might want to start looking at brands that are designed for more mature skin. There are differences. Moisture levels is a good example of one of the biggest differences. And that's exactly what Chogong Jean is. This is a brand that is designed for a more mature audience. And let me tell you, you feel it. Suisu is also a brand that I would say is geared towards a more mature audience, but guess why Chogong Jean is ranking higher on my list? These products are more affordable and yet still so, so good. If you go on the Yes Style website, this moisturizer under $40, even better prices on Style Vana. $30 for one fluid ounce of eye cream. Anyway, I'm holding up the eye cream because I fully intend to talk to you all about that one soon, but you know, you know the Yungin Jean cream is my favorite from this brand. I really love to use this as a night cream, kind of as an alternative to slugging. It is not that thick and heavy feeling that slugging is, and yet it, it still manages to feel very occlusive, very nourishing truly a wonderful night cream option. 
My number four favorite skincare brand. Okay, you know how I said that Marion May is a brand that is always summer in my routine. That's true of every brand I've talked about, except for maybe Beauty of Joseon. <laughs> my number four brand is one that I not only use every day, I use multiple times every single day in the shower and after I shower. And on my lips all day long, that brand is Kopari. Really what it is with Kopari is they are my favorite body care brand. I'll be sharing with you the body retinol soon. But I love their skincare as well, and I also really love the evolution of Kopari. I love that people didn't really like the brand when they first came out. And you know what they said? They said, you don't have to change. We will. So my favorite product from Kopari, I've talked about this a lot. It is still the Lip Glossy. This is my favorite lip balm ever. I also realized over the holidays, I think this finally surpassed Lancome's Bifacil as my most repurchased product of all time because I bought a ton of these in Black Friday deals. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? I would be making all this content about skincare and my top two most purchased products of all, most repurchased products of all time are a, a lip balm and a makeup remover. But if you think about it, it would be because I'm always trying sunscreens and serums and moisturizers. <laughs> so it would be the products that I'm not trying as much, you see? Anyway, this is, it's the perfect, it's the perfect lip balm. It is everything I could want in a lip balm. It is a lip product that I can just apply over my makeup. It doesn't matter what lipstick I've put on. I, I get the clear version. So it doesn't add any color, just a lot of shine. It almost feels like a lip oil and yet kind of like a lip balm. No stickiness, none. And a little bit of a flavor, but it doesn't compare to something like Summer Fridays lip balm, which I understand the hype behind that. Like I said in my Summer Fridays lip balm review, when you put on the Summer Fridays lip balm, you feel like you just ate a cookie. When you put on the Kopari lip balm, you go, oh, oh I think I smell it. And that's perfect for me. Sometimes I don't, actually often, I don't wanna be overwhelmed by smells. So it's just perfect. It's 0.35 ounces, which probably doesn't sound like a lot, but for a lip balm, that is actually quite generous. The only catch, the only catch with this is that you have to learn to not over squeeze when you first get it. One of you reminded me of that recently. Thank you for mentioning that because I, I've bought so many of these that I forgot about that learning curve. Yeah, I definitely squeezed out too much when I first bought it. My number three favorite skincare brand, another brand that I use, Daily, daily. Medicube. I like Medicube for their devices. Now this is another expensive brand, so we're gonna have to have a chat again. But recently, recently, I just feel like Medicube really proved themselves for me. I bought the two newest devices, the body care device and the eye and lip device. And I love both of them so much. You know, they were not inexpensive devices and yet I'm over here going, I am so glad I spent the money on those. And if you can say that after just dropping, you know, 200 to $300, I, I, feel like, I, I feel like they've proved themselves to me. But like I said, I factor in price. I really do, even when we're talking about something that is $300. And as an example, I haven't done this yet with Medicube, but I sat down and calculated the cost per use of my LED mask 25 cents. So that is something that is really important for all of you to consider before you buy any kind of device. Are you a person who is going to use it? I do, I love using my devices, but I know that this is just not true of everybody. I have spoken to people who have said, oh, I bought the new face and then I shoved it in a drawer. That is a lot of money to not use. <laughs> See, everything comes down to personal preference, but I love and use all of my devices. And again with Medicube, I feel like every device that I've tried, I have been so happy with. They don't have an LED device though. I, I don't know why. Oh, I will tell you one thing. I do feel like Medicube has too many devices at the moment. I really do. Six, there are six to choose from. So maybe don't necessarily buy anything just yet because I've heard that there is a four in one device coming to replace four of the devices, bringing it down to three options, which sounds much more manageable. 
If I understand correctly, this is coming to the US soon, but only available in Korea for now. Again, again, let me know if you know more about this. I'm just an American. <laughs> but for now, I will say I'm finally settling on the Ucera as my favorite device. I just feel like this one has done the most for me. I was scared of it. This is the one I was the most scared of because this is a radio frequency device and I'd heard <laughs> horror stories around radio frequency. But I think, you know, there is a big difference. There is a big difference between a clinical level device and a home device. And all I can say is I'm, I'm so happy with the results from this. I love it. I love using it. This one was gifted by the brand back when they still sent me PR. And I've had it now for, I guess it's about a little bit over two years still works just as well as day one, and that's what proves to me that these are high quality devices. When you're gonna spend that kind of money, you don't want your device to break. And I feel very confident telling you, with all six of my devices, they're all working just as well as they did on day one. Therefore, in spite of the very high cost of these, it's worth it to me. We are into my top two favorite brands. I feel like some of you absolutely know what's coming. You, you know the top two. Number two is Eccentry. I love Eccentry so much. We recently did a video on my top 20 products from them. Big old video. Love this brand. Was very tempted to pull out the new Onion New Pair products that I've been trying. But again, rules, rules, no new products. So again, I'm going with the Sunstick as my favorite product because it's so funny. I feel like Sunsticks are a great category, but you gotta find the perfect one for you. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a person who wears makeup, so that makes a big difference in the Sunstick that I choose. It cannot mess up my makeup. It's gotta glide on nicely and not disturb the makeup. Side note, have you all read that grunge makeup is coming back? Guess who read that? Like I said, a prerequisite to be included in this video is you gotta be a brand where I use your products all the time. And that's the case for me with this because it is the perfect sun stick for my needs. It is SPF 50 plus, PA 4 plus, the Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sunstick. I don't know if I said the name of it yet, but yes, this is not just my favorite product from Eccentry, but also my absolute favorite sunstick. I always have one in my bag. And we are finally on my absolute favorite skincare brand. I know by the process of elimination. I know some of you know. Stradia. I love this brand so much. Not only has it <laughs> absolutely helped with improving my skin, Lipid Gold, by far my absolute favorite product, one of my absolute favorite moisturizers, my most favorite, most favorite repairing product. Nothing has ever repaired my skin as well as Lipid Gold. And when it comes to, you know, judging my absolute favorite brand, who, who takes the top spot? It has to be a brand where I feel every single product that this brand has ever released has had so much thought go into it. You look at their Instagram account and you can tell that the founder is so passionate about skincare. You can tell that every person on the entire Stradia team is passionate about what they do. They love skincare as much as those of us that are skincare enthusiasts and it shows in every product. So while not every single product is a perfect match for my preferences, this still is my favorite brand. I have a whole video on them if you would like to know more. Favorite brand, you did it. A small little indie brand is my number one. And my friends, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was a fun video. Feel free to share your favorite skincare brands in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all next time.